Zalea Quayle Frazier was born March 8th in the year 2000, and she was from Michigan. Her sister Shayla described her as someone who had such a bright future for herself as Zalea was her own little boss. She was running her own boutique business, selling items of clothes and cute accessories to go with it. And Zalea was someone who spread positive vibes. She was, you know, just always smiling, laughing, and filled with joy. And that joy had runneth over when she welcomed her beautiful beautiful baby boy into the world at the top of 2021. Zalea was in love with being a mommy. Her son was now the center of her world and she would post tons of pics and videos on her social media of him and she even wrote a beautiful heartfelt message on her Facebook page expressing her love for her little man when he turned four months old and those who knew Zalea said she was definitely an amazing hands-on mom. She worked hard to make sure that she'd be able to take care of herself and her son. And Zalea had love in her life in many areas, including her baby boy's daddy, a young man by the name Jonathan Welch. And they had been together for some years. And although both young, they had been together since their teenage years, and they both would upload images and videos of each other, celebrating each other's love, and the people in their age group who knew of their relationship kind of viewed them as like couple goals. You know, these two young people coming together, creating life, and keeping their union intact for so long. But what people didn't know was the hell that Zalea faced with her boyfriend and the horrible, most despicable treatment that she received but didn't deserve. You see, according to reports, it was June of 2022 at approximately 3 a.m. when Jonathan had just got in the house where he and Zalea lived together. Normally, when people come home to their partners, you know, people ready to cozy up, cuddle up with their loved ones to end the night, but not Jonathan. When he got home, he decided that he wanted to violate Zalea, and he violated her in such a brutal way. He started out with trying to wake Zalea up out of her sleep, and when he woke her up, he began trying to be intimate with her, and maybe at that point she denied him because he had gotten extremely aggressive with her, and he demanded for her to give him the passcode to her phone. Zalea denied him access to her phone, you know, which she had every right to, but this sent Jonathan in into a rage. He got up, he went and grabbed an extension cord and wrapped it around Zalea's neck and began strangling her with the cord. He then got some gasoline and poured it all over her body. After pouring the gasoline on her body, he put a hot spatula to her skin, burning her skin. And then he attempted to sodomize her with a pole. And then he threatened her with a drill. And at some point, Jonathan went into the kitchen and this is when a very strong-willed Zalea saw her opportunity to escape. So she ran out the front door of the home and she went to the home of a neighbor's house located in the 13,000 block of Kilbourne Avenue. Jonathan, bold as ever, ran up on the neighbor's porch trying to snatch Zalea off the porch, but he left pretty quickly after failing at removing her off the porch. So the neighbors then brought Zalea into their home and gave her a blanket to cover herself as they called 911 for her. Zalea was physically broken down. She had blisters, bruises, open cut up wounds and more all over her body. But the drama of that morning wasn't over as Jonathan's sick, demented self came back to the neighbor's house and had the audacity to kick their door in. But then he cowardly ran off into a vehicle and then left the location. Hours later that same day, Jonathan was arrested and hit with multiple charges, including first degree home invasion, use of possession of a harmful device causing injury, criminal sexual conduct in the second degree, assault with intent to commit sexual penetration, assault with intent to do great bodily harm, three counts of felonious assault, torture, and a series of other violent crimes. And you would think that this would be enough to keep him behind bars for good, but then he was able to have a bond that was listed at 100,000 US dollars with 10% cash surety. And guess what? All it took was for his mother to pay the 10,000 US dollars to get him up out the slammer. And he sure enough was able to go right back to his mother's house as he was ordered to. And he went on a GPS tether. 
this just so happened to be a grave mistake on the law's end. And I'll even say Jonathan's mother's end, because this was just the beginning of a deadly ending. Just a few weeks after this terrifying encounter with the father of her child, 22-year-old Zalea Frazier was found deceased in the home that she shared with Jonathan. But not only was Zalea found deceased, so was Jonathan's own stepfather, 70-year-old Robert Bray Jr., and they had both been eliminated by Jonathan. It was reported that on the Sunday evening of July 10th, 2022, at approximately 8 p.m., Harper Woods police were called to the home in the area of Kenosha and Sanilac Streets. Apparently, the 911 call came from a woman that was inside of the home, and she told the dispatcher that someone in the home was holding her hostage. The woman on the phone was trying to explain what was going on, and then all of a sudden, all you hear are these blood-curdling screams in the background. And then after that, it's just silence. So at this point, there's commotion going on and police make their way to the home. As police get to the home, Jonathan initiates a whole standoff with police, literally shooting at the police from the window of his home. And not only that, through this entire ordeal, Zalea and Jonathan's one-year-old child was in the home. And if all that wasn't enough, Jonathan actually lit the house on fire with his baby boy in the house. So at this point, the house is burning, Jonathan's shooting from a window, there's two dead bodies in the crib, and a woman that was being held hostage. And the wild part is, the woman that was being held hostage was Jonathan's very own mother, 42-year-old Flossie Nicole Bray. The same mother that put the bread down to have him out of prison after he tortured Zalea. And Jonathan not only had his mother held hostage, but he had stabbed his own mother in the back with a butcher knife several different times. She was literally suffering from stab wounds in her back due to her own child. And the neighbors in the area said they actually saw Jonathan drop his baby out of one of the first floor windows of the home. They said he leaned out the window and dropped the baby on the grass while the baby was naked and the house was burning. We're talking about an awful incident here that happened on July 10th. We were here as it always unfolding we continue to discover new information day after day about this horrible case the family's home here remains a sad crime scene neighbors here tell us they watched jonathan welsh lower his little boy baby boy out the window then go back inside the home that's where police say he went on a horrible stabbing spree but i never would have thought that this would have occurred one week ago, this shocking scene played out across the street from Jeff Wolf's Harper Woods home. Video showing 23-year-old Jonathan Welsh surrendering to police after prosecutors say Welsh killed his longtime girlfriend Zalega Frazier, his stepfather Robert Bray, setting his mother's home on fire and shooting at police. Also, Welsh's own mother was stabbed in her back during the attack. It's just a tragedy. Um, really, it's all that can really be said about it. It's very tragic. All this taking place after Welsh was arrested and charged in June with torturing and sexually assaulting Frazier. But a 36th District Court Magistrate gave Welsh a $10,000 bond. Welsh's mother bonding her son out. Everybody's just shocked about it and dismayed that this all could have been prevented. Now, at some point, Jonathan's mother was able to escape from him, and she ran over to a neighbor's house. As she escapes, the police set up a perimeter around the home and found the one-year-old in the backyard of the home. The baby boy was rushed to a hospital for treatment, and he was found to be okay, thank God. Police said Jonathan barricaded himself in the home, and the standoff between him and the police lasted for seven hours before he finally stepped into the doorway of the home and surrendered himself. He was taken into custody and transported to a hospital to make sure he didn't have any burns or any smoke inhalation. And thankfully, firefighters were able to put out the fire. And only once the fire was out is when they found the deceased bodies of both Zalea and Jonathan's stepfather. Zalea had been brutally beaten, stabbed, and shot, and she was killed right in front of her own son. Robert Bray Jr.'s cause of death had been a result of blunt force trauma, so he was basically beaten to death. But that's not all. Not even a week after this catastrophic event took place, Jonathan's mother had succumbed to the stab wounds her son inflicted on her, and she too passed away. After being arrested, Jonathan learned he was facing three counts of first-degree homicide, three counts of assault with intent to commit homicide, one count of second-degree arson, 
seven counts of felonious assault, six counts of felony firearm violations. On Saturday, July 16th, 2022, almost 100 people consisting of family and friends who loved and missed Zalea popped out for a candlelight vigil to honor her memory that was held in Warren near Lincoln High School. Everybody showed up wearing purple, which was Zalea's favorite color, and they prayed together and they released purple balloons for her. And Zalea's mother wanted to tell the youth that, you know, listen, abuse is not love. You know, like it's being in a relationship and having somebody who's controlling you or, you know, they, they quote unquote passionate and they grabbing you up and this and that and talking to you crazy. None of that is love. And Zalea's sister wanted people to know if they were ever worrying about being judged by their loved ones for being in an abusive relationship, don't. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about being judged. And if you find yourself in an abusive relationship, go tell somebody that you love. Go tell somebody that you're close to. Don't keep it a secret. Now, fast forward in November of last year, 2023, you had 23-year-old Jonathan Welch, who was finally sentenced to prison. No bond, indefinitely. Wayne Circuit Judge Margaret Van Houten gave him a sentence of 45 to 70 years in prison for three counts of second-degree homicide, plus an additional 20 to 40 years for one count of second-degree homicide in the case of a young woman named Natalia Morse. And if you listening to this and you running like, wait, hold on, Benita, wait, what, who? Natalia Morse, we talking about Zalea. Who's Natalia Morse? He killed somebody else? Yes. Yes, he did, unfortunately. And the gruesome details of this sick man's murderous ways isn't over just yet. We about to get into that and what he did to Natalia in a bit. But for now, both of the sentences he was given are to be served concurrently. So that's a total of, what, 65 to 100 and something years. So he'll be in jail for the rest of his life thankfully. Now, Jonathan did plead guilty to all four homicides, which led to the dismissal of other charges that he was facing, including numerous weapons and assault charges. I'm assuming his attorney was able to work that out with the prosecutor and, you know, the judge probably just agreed to that. Now, during a Zoom court appearance, the family of Zalea and Jonathan's stepfather were able to speak what was on their hearts during their victim impact statements. Zalea's mom, Tina Harris, said, quote, I tried so hard to keep this monster away from my daughter for years, yet I failed. You took what was so precious to me. She meant everything to me. My daughter will never get to hold her son and watch him grow up. I believe Jonathan is truly a monster, end quote. Robert Bray's grandson, Laurente Welton, stated, quote, It hurts because, you know, we let him in and he took something away from us that we can't get back. I don't understand why this had to happen. It's too late to ask why, end quote. Now, I would like to take this time to circle back to the young lady I mentioned earlier, Natalia Morse, and I want to give the details on her untimely demise due to Jonathan. So, while the case of Zalea and Jonathan's parents were proceeding is when police learned about Jonathan taking Natalia's life back in June of 2022, just days apart from the vicious, torturous attack against Zalea that first time. You see, it was last year in 2023 when the family of Natalia had the band-aid ripped off their wounds and soot pulled into them when they learned that Jonathan had killed again. Natalia's mom, Chastity Morse, spoke about how she felt when her 24-year-old baby girl was taken from her. She said, quote, you took my daughter. You took somebody I can never get back. Somebody I love so much. I'm hurt for the rest of my life. The last time I saw her, I hugged her and I told her that I loved her. And my kids were about to graduate. She was talking about, oh, I'm going to come down for the graduation. But she died the day before her sisters graduated. They had to walk across the stage the next day knowing that their sister died. And I told them, listen, do it for your sister. And they walked across that stage for her. They did it. They did it for her, end quote. Natalia's body had been found in the 4630 block of Lenox Street near Canfield and Dickerson on the east side of Detroit 
after Jonathan had killed her by blunt force trauma, and then he stole her car and took it to an area near Lappin and Billen Streets, where he set the vehicle on fire. Natalia's body was positively ID'd later on after she was found. Natalia's sister, Aaliyah, said Natalia was the oldest sibling of seven and described her to be super loving, very kind, self-driven, and was just focused on being the best version of herself. You know, she was only a young lady, only in her early 20s. And Natalia's mom was also able to speak what was on her heart during Jonathan's sentencing via Zoom video call. Through choked up tears, she said, quote, I'm in pain every day. I hope you rot in jail. I'd like to see you burn. You're a piece of shit. I fucking hate you. I hope you get what's coming to you. End quote. And although I know it won't change Natalia's absence, I am just so glad that Chastity was able to at least say those words to him. In terms of Zelaya's baby boy, I don't know all that's going on with the baby or who he's currently residing with. But I did see a post that her sister wrote on Facebook in August of this year. And she said, quote, y'all, I'm really sad as fuck. I can't stop thinking about Zalea. And if you know me, my life been going through all different types of routes. Once I get my shit together for her son, my nephew is going to know exactly who I am. And he's going to know his titi don't play no games about him. I swear to God. Just give me a minute, Sam. I'm doing this for me, you, and your mama, end quote. To me, it sounds like maybe she hasn't been able to see her nephew. And, you know, I don't know. But if that's true, then I really would hate to hear that. I hate the thought that there may be some kind of discourse amongst the family. I pray that there isn't any discourse or drama. And I really just pray that peace engulfs everyone's hearts and minds much sooner rather than later that's involved with the little boy and just, you know, still dealing with the after effects of the deaths of all of these people. Zalea was such a beautiful girl. I don't know if the abuse that she endured that night from Jonathan before her death was something she experienced with him often. I know the mom said that she was trying to get Zalea away from him for years. I don't know if it's something where she just had a hunch something wasn't right or if she actually witnessed some things, but clearly mama knew best, you know? And I don't know if Jonathan was on drugs if he snapped or whatever the case may be, if it was something where maybe she felt like she would be judged if she told people what she was going through. And if that's the case, that breaks my heart so bad because there's so many victims who suffer in silence. So many, you know, both men and women. And this isn't the first story I've done where domestic violence has ended in death. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you are somebody who is currently being abused emotionally, physically, mentally, verbally, or maybe you're not going through it, but it's somebody that you know, whether it's abuse from an intimate partner or a family member, you have to know that you are not alone. You shouldn't be embarrassed or worried about being judged. You cannot be judged by nobody. You are somebody that's literally fighting for your life day in, day out when you shouldn't have to. So please reach out for support, reach out for help. And if you're someone who's like, nope, I'm absolutely never telling anybody that I'm, I'm close to what I'm going through, that's fine. You know, that's what the national hotline is for. You can talk to someone who doesn't know you. You can remain anonymous. They don't have to know who you are and still be willing to help you by giving you resources. Jonathan was an unhinged maniac. The man killed his own mother who literally helped him get out of that pickle the first time, which is just, you know, wild to think about in itself. I won't speak too much on how I feel about her decision to help him because I respect the deceased. So I'll leave that right there. He killed all these people in the span of one month, maybe even less. And for no reason other than him being a controlling weirdo abusive circus freak who appeared to have no soul you could look in his eyes and see that he had zero remorse no remorse to offer the families no remorse for his son that will grow up without any biological parents no remorse for taking the life of the mother of his child his mother natayla robert nothing you know just sick and then why did he even get a bond to begin with anyway that's a whole other thing that was never supposed to happen because had he been able to stay in prison for the brutal, torturous attack against Zelaya the first time, baby girl would have still been alive to this day, you know? So 
Familia, this story has me flustered, flabbergasted, drained, and sorrowful. And I could say a lot more, but you know how we do. Tell me how this story made you feel in the comments below. Let me know if you or anyone you know has been in an abusive relationship that you kept secret or maybe they kept secret. Do you know someone whose life ended because they couldn't find themselves leaving the situation? Maybe it wasn't someone romantic. It could be a family member as well. You know how we do. Leave your comments and we'll chop it up below. I left the DV National Hotline information on the screen at the beginning of this video, right now at the end of this video, and it'll also be listed in my description box. So please utilize that information if need be. I send my deepest condolences to the families and loved ones of all the victims of this story. Rest in peace, Delaya. Rest in peace, Natala. Rest in peace, Robert, and rest in peace, Flossie. May all your spirits live with your loved ones forever, and may Zalea's memory be kept alive for her baby boy. I pray he'll always know how much his mommy loved him. None of these beloved spirits will ever be forgotten.